Welcome to the Northfield Podcast with Caleb Gordon. You can find out more about Caleb at www.calebgordon.com. Welcome to the Northfield Podcast. My name is Caleb, and tonight, again, I've got my brother David, and we've got another special guest tonight, Jeremy Dunkel. Say hi, Jeremy. Hey, America. (laughs) So, I want to talk about breaking strongholds, guys. Men have struggles with a lot of stuff, and and my text that I want to run with is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, We'll start in actually verse 3. It says, For though we walk in the flesh... We're not waging war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. But we have divine power to destroy strongholds. Verse 5 says, We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. What do you guys, in the world in which we live, guys struggle with a, a lot of different strongholds. Um, one of the things I, I want to touch on tonight, just for a little bit, is the idea of lust and the idea of pornography. Because it's something... Um, I read a stat that said that pornography is bigger, a, a bigger industry than all of the alcohol, all of like sports, all, all these different industries combined. Pornography is bigger than all these different industries combined. And if you're sitting inside the church world, guys, you know, one in, I think it's like one in three, one in three guys struggle with lust and with struggle with pornography in the church. How, how would you guys, how would you guys think it, it's a good, I guess, a good way for us to help guys break this this stronghold of lust because it's something that every i mean correct me if i'm wrong but i I struggle with it i'm not and i'm what do you think dave jeremy no i mean it's a it's a it's a real thing that i i know i mean like you said i i lust is something that i mean you know i'm in my 30s now that uh, but in my years past, it's a, it's been a thing that, that I've, I've struggled with, you know, looking at a woman that, that wasn't my wife or wasn't my significant other, um, you know. I mean, when I was in my twenties, I think it was something, I mean, I'm almost 40 now and I thought by now I'd have things figured out. Like I, I, you know how you think in your head, man. I bet so and so that's I'll forty or thing, fifty. I'll have everything straight by the time I'm forty or yeah. by the time I'm thirty-five, which isn't true. It, I could have swore that like, I knew guys that like I looked at, I looked at them as older men, and I thought, man, they got stuff figured out. Look at that, uh-huh. they got a good marriage, they got this. And I look now, I look back, I look at me now, and I'm like, I still struggle with some of the same stuff I struggled with when I was nineteen. Uh-huh. And I, I guess, I mean, the scripture tells us here that that we can destroy strongholds and destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against God. These things are thrown in at us and we have the ability, the scripture tells us here that we have the ability to overcome these strongholds. How is that? How? How? Well, if you, I'm glad you asked. I'm, I'm, I've got notes. I, I actually prepped a little bit for this this week. Um, if you go to... Uh, Galatians chapter 5, flip over a couple pages to Galatians 5, and verse 16, look at this, 5.16 of Galatians, but I say walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh, for the desires of your flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Hmm. But if you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So, what you look like you're you you got a give me just two minutes. You got a minute. You minute. Okay. So if you read, because because this next verse in nineteen six nineteen talks about 
sexual promiscuity and sexual sin. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. And I warn you, as I've warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I read that text and I'm just like, whoa. How do we, how do we get past this? Because the scripture tells us if we walk by the spirit and don't gratify the flesh, or we won't, grat we won't gratify the flesh if we walk by the spirit. So, and I got to thinking about that because if you, if you flip over like one more book in Ephesians um, chapter... Six. It tells us in verse ten, six ten. It says, "Finally, be strong in the Lord, and in His strength and His might." I think sometimes we as guys say, "I'm not going to do it again," and we then we do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it again, and then we do it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What's, this will be the last time. It's the last. I'm never going to do it again, and then <coughs> we still struggle with it. Right? I think it's because we try to white knuckle it. I mean, that's my thought. I could be wrong, but we try to white knuckle these things out. Um, you, you got something? Yeah, I, I got a. Back to your Galatians uh, five sixteen. Yeah. Let's kind of dissect that. Okay. I say then walk in the spirit. What's that mean? Walk in the spirit. What in the world does that mean? I don't know. Dissect it more. Walk in the spirit means that we allow. The Holy Spirit to control our actions. How do we do that? How do we allow the Holy Spirit to control what we think, what we do, what we feel, everything? I, I, I'm assuming we're going to have to surrender something in order for Him. You're to on take, the right path. We're going to have to surrender something for, in order for Him to take over. You need to be in the Word constantly. You mean I got to open the Bible and read it more than just on Sundays I know and Wednesdays? These, I know these are just words flowing out of my mouth. But repetitiously, you have to learn the Word of God. See, David's smarter than I am. He just mm. pretends like he's not. Stop it. Seriously. Repetition. I'm repetition. Repetition. So, say you're walking down the road, and you see a hot girl. Okay. Instead of your mind going to the wrong thing, since you practice <laughs> repetitiously in the Word, you're walking in the Spirit, you're reading his word repetitiously, automatically. God brings a verse to your mind. Boom. Thou shalt not. Help me here. Lust. Lust. <laughs> Thank you. I got hung up there for a second. <laughs> Lust. <clears throat> um, so. So. And, uh, go ahead. So I think what you're trying to say is, is along with preparing ourselves with God's word, we've got to arm ourselves because mm -hmm. I would say that we're in a battle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a war that is that we're being waged under. Would you agree, Jeremy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're under assault constantly from <clears throat> Satan. He, I mean, I've always say this, but he, he doesn't care how he gets us as long as he gets us. And if he can use a hot chick to get us, then he'll do it. And this is where Ephesians six comes in. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in, in his strength and his might put on the whole armor of God. So that's where, I mean, we have to, you said repetitiously, David. Yes, um, you have to. And so, there's something, just a little side note here, a little rabbit chasing. Start out with smaller books of the Bible. When I say repetitiously, I've started reading 1 John. Okay. You read 1 John for one month, straight through every day. So that way... To so one month, read First John. Just over and over and over, over and over and over. And over and over and over. So you're saying just over and over. prep yourself a lot. And then things will just... Things will happen during the day in a, in a verse. Boom. First John 1, 9. will pop in your head. Just automatically. So Jeremy is a hunter. <clears throat> and Jeremy, you just... When you're, when you're getting ready to go out and go hunting, <clears throat> do you... Do you just jump in the truck and just go? No, you prepare. <clears throat> what, what I mean, what, why do you why do you prepare? To give you the best opportunity to succeed. So, like David said, repetition, bow, shooting your bow, practice. Uh, 
you know, numerous things. Scouting. Getting yourself knowing your territory. Mm -hmm. Knowing what, what you're what you're after. Man, I think that's I think that's a great analogy for us as as, as Christian men. We've got to know our territory. We've got to know where we're at. We've got to know our terrain because if we don't know what we're doing, we're going to maybe shooting ourselves in the foot. And you know we've all seen video on Facebook and YouTube of guys that are not prepared, trying you know, just going out and they just they'll shoot. You know, I saw one guy just you know being goofy and just shot himself in the leg with his pistol because he wasn't prepped. He wasn't. He was being. He wasn't really on point. And I think a lot of times if we're not repetitiously, like David said, in the Word <coughs> and we're not putting on the armor of God and we're just trying we're just like oh I failed and then I'm not going to do it this time I'm going to make it I'm going to it's going to work and everything's going to be okay and then we fail again and then we we mo we move into this cycle of oh we hate ourselves instead of running to Jesus and saying Christ I need you we try, we we stay away from because we feel guilty and we're nervous and so we're just like oh, I don't know I don't know I don't know um, how do I get out of this? And we try to help men. We try to look, and you said this last week, men need other men and we, we've got to come alongside each other. But I think the, the first thing we've got to do, and I agree with Dave hundred percent is we've got to immerse ourselves in God's word. We've got to be reading. We've got to be prepping. We've got to be knowing what we're doing uh, to get us to the spot where we are. You look like you're about to say something. Oh, well, just, to re go go back over this again, but uh, obviously, if you want to defeat your daily issues, whether it be lust or whatever it is, everybody has their own things. Um, Bible study begins with just simply reading the book of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but frankly, a lot of people never get to that point. Why? Why do you think that they don't get to the point of not, of not reading the word? We'll get to that. Oh, you're gonna get there. Okay, uh, at oh, best, yeah. they nibble and kind of thumb through the text of the Bible. Uh, they may even read books about the Bible. They may read a, a commentary or something to something like that, or and books about the Bible and devotional materials loose based on it. It's not the actual word itself. It's somebody like you or I writing something Regurgitating down. Regurgitating something out about yes. the Bible. Sure. Which I'm not saying that's bad. No, it's not. But they don't read the Bible itself. We've got to know the, the source of where that comes from. Good Christian books and magazines yeah, that, those are, that supplement bad. your Bible reading, That's that's it's fine. But there is absolutely no substitute whatsoever for the Word of God. Yeah. And if you want to actually walk in the will and the Word and the, and as it says here in uh, Galatians five sixteen, walk in the Spirit. That's what you have to do. Yes, we have to. And when we walk in the Spirit, we can accomplish what Second Corinthians tells us: says we can destroy strongholds. Like John Eldridge said something. He said that we make agreements with the enemy. A lot of times in different areas and different aspects of our lives, we make agreements with the enemy. We have the ability, right here it says, Second Corinthians, we have the ability to destroy arguments and destroy agreements that we make with Satan. And Bill Gothard said this, he said, we have to ask Christ to take back the ground that we forfeited. Like all of us, every guy that's listening to this, everybody that's sitting around this table right now, we've all <coughs> forfeited ground forfeited land to the enemy and we've made agreements about ourselves we've made our agreements about well it's just I'm, I'm a guy i just struggle with this and we just surrender that ground we've got to ask christ to take that ground back and let him be the author and perfecter finisher of the faith hebrews chapter 12 and 13 there um it, it's something that's it's super in uh, super important so um just right quickly on this subject, turn to Psalms. What was that? Psalms. I don't know. This is one nineteen. Psalms one nineteen, like one, and then verse nineteen. One one nine, one hundred and nineteen. One hundred and nineteen. Verse eleven. 
Yep. And this is kind of going with the repetitious thing. If you repetitiously learn the Word of God, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Stored if you there. hide that word and you study that word repetitiously, it is going to remain inside of you. So when that sin starts to kind of pop up, mm -hmm. his word will block it. That's good. It's a good verse. It's really good. I like that. <clears throat> so Psalms 119 verse 11. If you're listening, write that down, man. That's really good. Uh, uh, ESV says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I love that. Stored up like a for a season when we need it. Um, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, that's, I mean, I, I hope that and I, we've gone, this is the longest podcast we've done so far, but uh, it, it's a good, it's a good topic of how to overcome sin, how to, over, and this just doesn't apply to lust and pornography. I mean, every, every guy struggles with, with, different sins this can apply all over the place like it doesn't just have to be sin of lust it could be anger it could be pride it could be whatever um we have the ability to break those strongholds but we don't do it on our own strength and our own might we do it by the shed blood and the power of jesus christ period like that's the only way we get this and how do we get that that understanding and that knowledge is like david said we have to immerse ourselves and like you said we have to know our territory we got to know where we're at. We've got and we've got to immerse ourselves and train ourselves up in God's word. So, um, you got anything else, Dave? You look like you're no, Jeremy. I want you. you you've been the least talker tonight. You told me you would be. So, I want. Would you uh, just take a few minutes just to dismiss us in prayer? Just this is like I said. This is our Wednesday night thing where we gather together and we talk about life and we talk about struggles and then we uh, we just end up and we pray together. Uh, we do that just. Uh, I will. Father, we do thank you for this for this time that we get to come together, Lord, in your house, Lord. And just as men around other godly men, Lord, we thank you for for letting us dive into your word, Lord. And, and uh, thank you for Caleb, Lord, with this podcast, trying to reach out to those people, <clears throat> Lord, who need to hear your word. Lord, we're thankful for, just for your love and your mercy, Lord. Thankful for your salvation that you've you've brought to us lord we yeah. we're just so grateful for you and the opportunities that you have given to us lord we just ask that you'll protect us protect our family and protect our church lord we love you and we thank you amen, amen. thanks guys go get them <laughs>